Well, good morning and welcome to a rather windy learn to fish video that is dedicated to feeder fishing, a really effective style of fishing. And it's something if you're not out there doing, hopefully this short video will give you all the tips and tricks to help you catch a few fish. So the starting point is going to be the hardware that you need, the rods and reels for feeder fishing. And it is really, really important to get yourself a dedicated feeder rod mainly because they've got plenty of power in the butt section to aid casting, but more importantly, really sensitive quiver tips that normally come with a little colored indicator at the end of the rod to help you see the bites. Basically, the quiver tip is your float in the style of float fishing. So everything that's happening at your feeder end in the lake is transmitted and you read that through your quiver tip. So again, you don't need to buy an expensive rod, but you do need a dedicated feeder rod. The length is completely up to you. I would determine it on the style of fishing that you're doing. If you're fishing really small lakes or small fish, perhaps a nine or 10 foot rod would be perfect. Casting big long distances of big fish, perhaps look a 13 or 14 foot rod. But for an all round generic, let's go with what I've got today. I've got a Horizon X class, 12 foot six, and that does me for probably 80% of fishing. And I've coupled that up with a 4,000 size reel. So that again, a 4,000 reel and a 12 foot rod would literally do 90% of fishing situations. You only need to go a bit more specialist if the fishing you're doing is extremely long or let's say extremely short. And then I'll keep it really simple. I've loaded my reel up with six pound mainline. And again, that would cover me for anything that is in here. If the fish were a lot bigger, I'd perhaps go up to eight pound or if I'm only fishing for silver fish, drop that down to four pounds. So you do need to juggle a little bit to the fish you're doing and the situation of how far you're fishing, but those simple guidelines should get you along and get you fishing with the hardware that you need. Right, so once you've sorted the hardware, it's time to take a look at the business end, which is the rig. So I'm gonna run you through a real simple feeder rig now, and there is no need to complicate it. So we'll start with the feeder. Now this is just free running on the lines, really good for bite indication. And that is attached on a little snap swivel here, because it allows me to change the weight or the style of the feeder really, really quickly. And that is one thing that's worth a mention. So just in this little box here, I've got a few different styles because you never know what you're going to need. So it's, I mean, they're all basically the same. They're a carrier for either ground bait or pellets, whatever you decide to feed. And basically you pick the style of feeder to what you're using today. So today I'm using like a wire cage feeder and a bullet nose cone on it because I really need to punch it through the wind so they fly really well. But if I only had a small cast, I'd happily use something like this, you know, a little plastic cage feeder that doesn't need too much weight to get out there. So a real <coughs> sort of simple rule of thumb would be, if you want to put a lot of bait out, use a big feeder. If you wanted to put a little bit of bait out, you'd use a little tiny feeder, and then you match the weight to how far you need to cast it. Obviously, a heavier feeder is gonna cast that little bit further. So there's your feeder choice and a few different options. That then runs down onto a couple of little nine number stops, and all that does is stop it running back over the knot. And if I hold it this way, you can see it kicks it out at a bit of a right angle. So it stops tangles. That's really, really important. And that's against a twisted boom section. So this section here is all doubled up and twisted. And that again, as you can see, I spin around here, it stops it tangling around the feeder. And then that's on to a loop to loop from a hook link. Nice sort of one foot hook link I've gone for today. That's something you can experiment with. And then I've got a size 12 hook on there. So I'm just gonna bait this up now and we'll, we'll get it back out there. What I haven't done, or what I'm not going to do, is show you how to tie that rig because we've got a dedicated tutorial step by step on ADTV. So if you want to know exactly how to tie the rig, 
head over to there and I'll put a link in the description below and it's a nice couple of minute video on exactly how to tie it but this here is more about how to use it and get the best from it so hopefully now it's going to show it's non-tangle proof we're going to get it out there there we go and hopefully there's another fish waiting for us not too far in the future Right, so nothing on that cast, but it gives me a good time now to talk you through undoubtedly the most important thing when it comes to feeder fishing. And that is first of all, building up a swim. And secondly, really important, doing it nice and accurate. The more accurate you can get at feeder fishing, trust me, the more fish you're gonna catch. So let's, ta let's start off with the, let's start off with the building up of a swim. And what I mean by that is how often you're gonna cast. And it's, it is quite a hard question because there's no hard and fast rule to it. But what I would say is certainly at the start of the session, I try and build up a swim and cast a lot quicker to get some bait there. Obviously, every time you cast out with the feeder, you're putting bait into your swim. So you're building up an area that these fish are feeding on. And I would even start the session sort of every three or four minutes, casting it in in the same spot and try and get a bed of bait down there because that's what's going to draw them in and hopefully into a really good day's fishing. But obviously the most important thing is getting it on the same spot and that's where accuracy comes into it. So first of all, what you'll notice here on my reel is I've got it clipped up in a line clip, okay? So that now shows that every time I cast out, it's going to be in exactly the same spot distance wise because it can't go any further than a line clip. So always clip up once you're happy with the spot that you're fishing. And then all you've got to worry about is where am I casting it to? So pick yourself a far bank marker, something that's not going to move. There's no point doing a car or anything like that. It could walk off. Pick something that's always there. For me, I'm fishing towards the end of that spit that comes out on the island. So I know exactly where I'm fishing to, and I know I can't go any further than the spot I'm fishing at. So let's put it into practice. See if we can get it there nice and accurately. So a firm cast, because you know you're going to hit the clip. There we go, plop, and just off the end of that island. So that is bang on. And the more and more you practice, get out there and practice your casting, the better at that you'll get. And like I said, I promise you, you'll catch more fish. And one last thing on about presentation and accuracy. As you see what I'm doing here is sinking my line do not move your feed at this point. You've just put it in the perfect place where all your other casts have been going all day. The last thing you wanna do is wind down really tight to it and move it off that spot because you're gonna defeat the object. So take your time, let the line sink, and then you can just slowly pop it onto the rod rest and you are now in prime spot for another bite. Right, so the last thing we need to take a look at is the baits that you're going to be using for your session. And it is venue dependent and also personal preference because everyone has their favourites. But let's go for what we're trying to catch today. We're predominantly trying to catch some bream, but let's be honest, we're happy with anything. Roach and carp, if they come along, absolutely fine. And that's why I've got a mixture of bait. So hook bait here. I've got a few maggots that I'm using as my hook bait. I've got some casters. I've dampened down a few micro pellets just to really see if we can get a bonus fish. I've got a tin of corn and I've got some worms. So I've got bait that pretty much will attract and catch absolutely anything. But the most important thing, because I've been concentrating today on a ground bait feeder style, it's this here, which is my ground bait. And it's so important to get used to mixing this right. So it's nice and easy if you get yourself a big bait tub and then slowly add little bit by little bit of water. So lake water, drop by drop, mix it together really vigorously to get it all dispersed as much as you can and keep going until it's slightly too damp. So when you squeeze it in your hand, it all comes together in a sort of a damp ball, but trust me in 15, 20 minutes, it will dry out perfectly. 
and then it's time to pop it through a riddle. So put all of that onto a riddle. You'd be amazed at the lumps that are in the ground bait. You riddle it through and you finish with a nice fluffy ground bait and you end up with exactly what we've got here and it's a perfect ground bait ready to fish. And now I use this purely as a carrier. So all these baits that I discussed earlier go in a little sandwich. So that's where you can get really creative now. I plug in one end of the feed with ground bait and then whatever you want to put in this little sandwich. So if you wanted to catch loads of carp, for example, you want a, a commercial or you could just put pellets in there. I mean, you could put in some mini boilies and it really doesn't matter. But today seems to be for me a few casters, a few pellets, a little bit of corn, and there's the sandwich. And filling your feeder in this way is absolutely critical because if you put all of that particle into the ground bait, you can't take it out. And you may find on certain days you're catching loads of fish, you can load up loads of particles and just keep catching them. But on other days, it gets a little bit more tricky and that means you have to take some of that bait out. So you can just put ground bait in, create a bit of a cloud, slight attraction that way, but you're not overfeeding the fish. So filling it as a sandwich is really important and it just allows you to put in whatever you want into your mix. But there we go, there's another one onto the spot and hopefully, we'll be able to catch a fish to end up. There we go, a nice bream to end on. I think it shows that getting it in the same spot all the time, being nice and accurate, and a decent quality bait you can get a few fish together. So if you haven't been out and tried feeder fishing, hopefully that short video has given you enough information to go out there and give it a go. And if there's anything else you want us to cover in the learn to fish category, drop us a comment below. But I'm sure there's a few more of these out there. So I'm gonna carry on fishing and we will see you on the next one.